Welcome back to part 18 of bungalow refurbishment. Now, at the back, once the fence and gate has been done, I have started with rear porch. And you can see there is quite a lot of concrete to break. That wasn't easy, including the digging. The entire thing was just full of rubble and concrete and more rubble. Just endless, absolutely endless. In this video, uh, I'll show complete process up to up to above the ground. So you'll see all the digging, uh, clearing out foundation, concreting, building the walls below below the ground, and all of it. <clears throat> that is all. Rubble. Bricks. There is no soil. Bricks, concrete. God, that's hard to dig. <clears throat> hmm. It's starting to rain. At least it's not raining today. <clears throat> it's windy. We had some fun looking clouds coming around, but no rain, which is good. Now, regards to this dig. It's a very hard dig. And I'll explain. As you can see, the floor level is here. So at the moment we're waist high. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight courses of bricks and a course of block, which is another equivalent of three bricks, which is 11 courses of brick from the footing. That there is foundation, top of the foundation. And all this here was like that. You can see all that. That's just lumps of bricks, some old walls, washouts from cement mixers. I had a whole bags of cement thrown down that I pulled out that have just been hardened up. It's like this here. That's just pretty much neat cement. Um, it's just building rubbish. It's extremely hard to dig through it and I got this sewer line here or soil pipe that I don't want to build over, I want to build up to it. So with all these bits of concrete and washouts, I'm not sure when you start digging from the top down, you're not sure what's the cement cutting for the pipe and what is uh, what is actually just rubbish. So I decided to remove all this rubbish from here, came to top of the footing and then I thought, right, okay, now I'm going to dig a little footing that will go down about 10 inches or so, thickness of concrete, about 15, 16 inches wide, in time when they've been building this. So you can see where the floor level is now. Ground level is about three, in three bricks below at the moment. I just cleared an extra brick, uh, one brick height. And all this was made up. So they added about three foot of ground on this entire area after they built these bungalows. Because I, I also looked in the deeds and everything and this, these have been built in 1966. And before that it was a farmland and developers they purchased this land for a farmer, got planning permission and built all these bungalows. So why would they build up so high? Because they had to bring all this crop up. It's like, 
it's a bit serious. I mean, bit, at this, this is some varnish or something thin. And these bricks, they got pug in between. They're quite old. They're, I would say, well, they are imperial bricks. So that would say they're like 19, early 1900s to 1930s bricks from some walls that have been removed. So they all, they all rubble from demolition of some other buildings been brought up here to raise the ground level. And probably one of the reasons for that would be um, it was probably floodplain. So to keep the houses above the floodplain, the dun foundations obviously deep below below the ground back then ground level and then they just build up quite high I mean if you look this is from what where that organic matter was which is like grass section DPC that's 1100 and that's not floor level floor level is above DPC so it's four foot to the floor level. That's how how high they raised these houses, these bungalows up. So from the uh, ground level back then to the finished floor level, they raised it four foot to make him safer over the floodplain. And you can see that's this all like look, some bricks, some washouts from cement mixers and just it was really really difficult to dig and I still have to do it still still got all this to remove this is our old kitchen um, kitchen gully as you can see there it's a kitchen gully and it goes down and it will link up with the main run so I'll have to cut it somewhere here nice and neat and carefully and cut it off and um, yeah then I can just finish digging this footing across and back into the into the existing footings here and then I can concrete them. Now that section there for the bay window I kept it higher because it didn't have as much rubble and I could actually just dig straight down and um, I just kept it higher because I don't think it's any need really to go any deeper than this. This is dug down to the the top of the footings same as in the front house the front of the house for the porch and it's not going to be in almost any load here all, all i'm going to have is a pair of french doors a couple of windows and a bit of uh, fiberglass roof on top of that so this is two foot deep from existing ground level so i'll have to i'll have to concrete them footings first, once they're dug, then start building block work around up to the ground level and then I can concrete these footings here and then bring this block work in line with that. So stay tuned and uh, I'll, uh, I'll try to film every now and again, it's pointless just filming me digging, I think it's the most boring job ever. And it would be quite a long video, very boring long video, so I'm not going to film that. I'm just going to do every now and again a little update um, as I do now. Concreting from yesterday has hardened up. Now I measured up from inside, reveal, transferred it out here with all makeup, plasterboard, insulation, stud wall. That's where our wall is going to go. 
got my line going down that's where I'm gonna put blocks on this side and same on this side here got this reveal here again all the lines that's the finished plaster plus the board insulation stud and then that goes all the way down transfer there that's where we're gonna run another course of the blocks that way now because of the drain that goes along this trench and this footing I can't build on top of that directly and that's really where I want to go I want to go with my wall here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build wall off the footing along here about four inches five inches away from from the pipe so all the load is going to go on that wall on the footing below the pipe and I'm going to bring that two courses up that's to this level here which is one two three four courses below DPC and then I'm going to cast six inch reinforced concrete slab over that so the wall is going to be here then I'm going to cast four inch, uh, sorry, six inch concrete slab that's going to go over that wall and pass and get over the pipe. And then I can build off the edge of that up with my stud wall. It's going to be cantilevering slab that will sit on the footing that is past that pipe because I don't want to disturb that pipe. So I got my footing. 4 inch wall comes up, reinforced concrete slab comes over, then I can build my stud wall up off that edge. Again, same, same as, as on the front, I'm going to have a couple courses of brick, DPC, so it's all going to be separated from the ground, nice and dry, a few vent bricks and the void above the slab is going to be vented through the house, through this wall here, to the vent bricks and it's going to be all nice and nice and vented so first thing first I'm going to build this wall that wall the wall across here and then that will allow me to actually pull the concrete footing on that side there up to the height of the first course of the blocks here and then i'm gonna do my second course all together that and this here all the way around and then I can just shut it all out, put some mesh inside and uh, then cast one, one big slab across that area and this area here. I don't have to do it there, but I might do it, I might not. I'll see, I'll see. I don't have to do it there, but here I have to do it because here I'm coming. I want to build this edge off from above the pipe. But I don't want to put any load on that pipe and I want to make that pipe still accessible so if ever needs to be accessible accessed can be dug from the garden from that side and just go on underneath the slab against this footing here just down and get to the pipe if I ever need to that there I'm not sure might I might just do same same style with a concrete slab over it or might, might just do it the same as I did on front. Go all the way up. I'll see, I'll see.
So as you could see, um, I done three, four, five of that corner there from that mark. It's my 600 there, 800 was somewhere here, meter cross, and that was my square line of the building. And then whatever I had here, which was 2285, I believe, measurement, I transferred that measurement from this corner out to that corner, 1150 over. And place them two blocks in a single line, two outer one, and then go back into the building on both ends. Closed up these two little returns because now I want to pull the concrete in uh, window bay footing up to top of these two blocks, up to top of the first course. And then I'm going to run tomorrow course block on top of that concrete. It's gonna end up flush with this second course here so it's all gonna level through um, I'm not gonna finish this today because tomorrow as I said I'm gonna be mixing more pug for uh, them blocks so I'll just mix up enough to do them blocks and to finish this section here and today I'm going to concrete up and pour into this bit of footing here and again, the block work is not the neatest and prettiest, but strong. It's four and a half to one pug, no plasticizer, just sand, cement. It's going to be below the ground. It's not to be pretty, it's to be strong. It's nice and straight and plumb. That's important. now concrete at the top of the first course now tomorrow I can do the second course on uh, I'll probably do it conventional way here I'm just gonna rise two courses one to take the floor one to take the wall and here I'm gonna have a slab it's actually it's not coming that far over it's not coming like miles over the pipe it only goes like a couple of inches over the pipe um, needs to be something like 1350 you can see there 1350 it's literally just like inch and a half or two inches or two inches over the pipe so all I need to do is like bring it to about here slab and then most of this soil I hope most We'll go in there, in the middle, level it all out so the slab can sit on it and around, around the edges. That will take a fair bit around there. I'll have to bridge over, the, over this little stump. I capped off with the concrete uh, this branch, the pipe, where we had the kitchen gully. 
and I'll have to bridge over that so I don't put any load on any section of that pipe of that branch. before copyright kicks in <coughs> this section here as I said is gonna have a six inch reinforced concrete slab that's gonna sail over to about here so I'll have to cast this out probably tomorrow and this section here it's not gonna have that but what's gonna have a it's gonna have just a about three inches of concrete um, subfloor in here this is our sleeper wall to take floor joists it's going to be extended out DPC it's roughly top of the plate so on here I'm gonna have um, 
bit of pug, DPC pug, and then 4x2 plate on these blocks to take the joist. And on this side here, we're gonna have a, another course of bricks and then DPC, um, and then another course of bricks. And then we're gonna ra raise a stud wall. <clears throat> but that will be brought up together with these bricks here, with this wall, once I cast this six inch slab, then I'm gonna return this brickwork and run it together with this this side here. <clears throat> Sorry, I sound like I've got a frog in my throat and it feels like it. So I'm gonna backfill this, backfill this here, all these gaps around, backfill them, cast the slab here, and then I can carry on with bricks up to basically on the level with on the side of the door. <clears throat> and then that will be point where I'm gonna start raising a stud wall structure. We're gonna have a large opening here for French doors and two windows on the side. Here we're gonna have a large opening for a window this side and a door on this side here. So here we're gonna have a door, window, and then French doors with two windows on the sides. End of the day, all backfilled. Um, that there, that section there is just gonna have uh, about three inches of concrete on there. It's not taking any load, it's just to cap um, the underfloor void so it's not open, open to the ground. That bit there, it's gonna have a lean mix um, to about about this this depth here which is only about four inches below the ground um, lean mix concrete about 
10 to 1 dryish um, just enough cement in to set it sort of semi hard it's to stop any ground forces squishing that wall and breaking the bond and basically imploding it um, so it gives resistance uh, against the ground forces and you can't use strong cement or strong concrete because then water can't run through so if you get any water in there it should run trickle trickle through down to the uh, top of the uh, concrete foundation so lean mix in there um, here on this section I'm gonna shatter it out to about there just widened up the soil as I explained I'm gonna run overhang I'm gonna put six inch shattering and then we're gonna cast concrete six inches which is two bricks high so one two bricks there so that's gonna be our thickness of the concrete six inches like that um, 150 mil and then we can join up with that wall there that brick wall and run bricks around and around for our stud wall obviously with um, on this line here I'm gonna put vent bricks one there one there to be in line with them I might even reuse them them too um, I'm gonna put another two vent bricks on this side here so and when we open the floor up it's gonna have a cross ventilation all the way from the front underneath the floor through this section here and out and our vent bricks obviously going they're gonna be here I'm gonna set them um, on that course there so they are below DPC not above DPC um, yeah and that's about that's about it so enough for today I'm gonna pack up go home and tomorrow after work I'm gonna pop in again and do a bit of shattering uh, I'm gonna put a, a plastic sheeting as well for uh, radon gas and also stops any rising damp into the void it sort of minimizes the amount of dampness under the, under the floor so just gonna put sheeting on shatter it and put rebars rebars on that side i'm gonna drill them in and i'm gonna set them into the, into the wall and here they're just gonna be suspended off that um off them concrete blocks within within shattering gonna make sure that it's at least two inches from any external edge of the concrete so it's gonna be well within the concrete i'm gonna run it about three inches it's gonna be three inches off the floor three inches below the surface three inches in from the ends um because you want you don't want any um moisture to go into the into the rebar and blowing it up and there you go yeah that's uh, that's pretty much it i still got this frog in my throat my voice has not come back been seeing doctors today and they said it's all fine just got some viral infection on the throat or something so i don't know i'm not a doctor so yeah yeah see you tomorrow guys hello back we got a bit of sun today um after a very wet day yesterday show sure. really wet it's muddy this is how much of water has fallen last night been here tried um, tried to do a little bit um, I didn't film it because uh, I didn't want the camera get wet and I did just done a little bit and I thought you know what it is no point I'm just going home come back today so what I did um, because we're gonna run six inches of concrete concrete slab reinforced three inches up or midpoint uh, I drilled 
holes on every eight inches um, and set rebars in. I used resin fix. This uh, is the one I use. Row plug, Arkham 2. Uh, it's one of these super duper, I think it's epoxy resin fix things. And that then forms, you can see here where it oozed out, that's a solid, solid fixed anchored into the wall. Now, running shuttering, flush with our foundation wall underneath here, overhanging about six inches or so. As I explained, that's where, this is where our pipe is underneath, it's right there, like that. That's where our soil pipe is, and I wanted to build here, which is right on the one half of the pipe, and I can't really run foundation down. So run foundation in, off the pipe, and then running this slab over, and I'm going to run then stud wall up on this side here. So it's not resting above the pipe, it's actually transferring weight onto this side here. So I'm just going to finish this now, leveling out the... Uh, shuttering, supporting the shuttering so it doesn't bow out and uh, just to clear up around around here I'm going to put that DPM down it's not to do a total dump proofing it's to minimize dump ingress into the underfloor void and to stop any radon gas coming up through the slab that side there it's only going to have about 3 inches 2 or 3 inches of uh, a concrete regulation says for underflows just needs to be polyfin just needs to be capped on with even lean mix or whatever just to get something on it so but I'll just put three inches of concrete on so it's nice and solid and here we're gonna be six inches a proper slab with rebar or mesh within And it's all prepped up as you can see got about three inches below rebar and you're gonna have a, another three inches above the rebar again um, sitting nice in the middle I only got these a few bits of bricks just holding it off the polythene so it doesn't drop down and I'm just gonna cast a slab now in there a nice and level across that end there once that is done I'm gonna mix up some lean mix about 10 to 1 dryish and fill in the cavity here till about 5 inches below ground level just to stop any ground back pressure pushing into the middle and allow drainage that's why it's lean mix not dense concrete and this here is gonna be standard dense concrete about four and a half to one. It is sort of semi sunny, but still muddy. You can see that. Horrible. Uh, very soon we'll be out of this mud, I think.
and that part of the job is done. Just need to clear the mixer up, wash the tools, done the lean mix in there. You can see how it's actually quite dry and it's lean, not much cement in, just enough to harden up to hold the pressure between two walls. And it's all cast. It's coarse, it's not smooth, but it's flat. Uh, it doesn't have to be smooth, it is flat and it's straight. That's all that's important. Not bad. And rain held off. We didn't have any rain. Right, let's clear up and uh, have a beer. And see you next time.